I grew up in one of our state capitals. Just about every day, we'd drive by the Capitol building. Our state has an impressive one with a dome and a massive set of stairs leading up to the front doors, marble statues and heavy oak doors. We want our government building to be impressive. Our leaders represent us and are the image of our government's power. It's long been this way. If you visit Israel today, you can still see the remains of luxurious royal palaces and massive fortresses built by these ancient rulers. King Herod had been prolific in building these monuments to his power and authority. As Jesus arrived in Jerusalem for the Passover celebration, he passed by many of those ancient symbols of the government's power. He had no palace, no throne. He came riding in on a donkey. Matthew concluded that it was a fulfillment of the old prophecy, Behold, your king is coming to you humble and mounted on a donkey. We've been together now for several weeks, working our way through the Old Testament and into the New. In so many ways, all of these stories exist for this moment, this story. Jesus entering Jerusalem for Passover, what history has long called his Passion Week. This would turn out to be a Passover unlike all the others before it. Riding into Jerusalem, Jesus didn't make his way to a palace or to a king's throne. He would end up spending Passover with his disciples in a borrowed room. Jesus knew what was ahead. He was hours away from his arrest and crucifixion. So how does a king spend the night before his execution? Jesus got up from the meal, took off his outer clothes and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that he had wrapped around him. This should be his inauguration, a meal in his honor. Why was he washing their feet? Shouldn't they be washing his? What kind of a king is this that would humble himself to become a servant of man? Jesus wasn't done. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them saying, drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. While they held their bread and wine in confusion, Jesus knew that the next day it would be his actual body and blood that would be broken and poured out. In fact, the one who would betray him was sitting at the very table, holding in his hands those symbols of his life. Jesus led his disciples out of Jerusalem and over to the Mount of Olives to pray. He knew what was coming. Facing Jerusalem in the darkness, they watched that line of torches winding closer. It had begun. It would take them time to fully understand what Jesus had given them that night, but communion and those humble acts of service became a central part of their life and ministry for the disciples and for the church for centuries. It's still ours today. To follow this King is to give, to serve, and to remember. Listen.